Welcome everyone, my name is Worthy Pickle and this is your channel for all things Starfield. Before we dive into today's video though, I did want to give you guys a quick update on the channel and the videos that are going to be coming out the next few days. I initially planned on having a Starfield first impressions video out today, but because I received the key to the game a little bit later than expected, that video will actually be coming out tomorrow. I wanted to make sure I gave the game enough time and I put enough uh, time and effort into the video before I publish it. So I apologize, it is coming out a day late, but hopefully because of that, it is going to be a lot higher quality of a video. And then after that video, I do plan to release a couple different videos showing the first hour or so of the game with no commentary. So if you don't have the game yet, but you wanted to see just the start of the game, you'll have that video on my channel. And then a separate video, I do actually want to walk you guys through the details of character creation through and through all of it, stepping you through it, explaining it. Um, so that will be coming out after that. And lastly, I am going to be live streaming the entire game on this YouTube channel. I'm going to be starting that on Saturday, so be sure to tune in that as well. So if you are interested in anything Starfield related, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. I will be keeping all of my content spoiler free unless I specifically mention it at the beginning of the video. Uh, so you don't have to worry about me uh, breaking out some news about the main story or anything like that. But with all of that being said, let's get started with today's video. For those of you that purchased the premium edition of the game, you'll be able to play Starfield in just a few hours, which is so exciting. But with that, it comes to no surprise that Starfield's Twitter page is giving us a lot of information on the game. Most of that information is surrounding Constellation and the members of Constellation. So they actually gave us a lot of the history of each of the individual members. And so in today's video, we're going to be covering the history and what brought these people into Constellation in the first place. Their Twitter post reads, Meet Vasco, named after famed explorer Vasco de Gama, and Constellation's faithful robot. Constellation members are like a family to Vasco, and he does his best to bond with them and help in any way possible. I find it interesting that they mention that he tries to bond with them. I mean, he is a robot, he is the only robot member of Constellation, but it gives us a glimpse at the depth of Vasco and the capabilities that he has on an emotional side of things. He tries to bond, he tries to connect with these people, even though he is, well, a robot. They also announced that Vasco is voiced by Jake Green. I don't know who that is, but maybe you do. Pretty cool. Uh, we also learned Constellation Chair Malcolm Livington found Vasco in an Aquila City junkyard and brought him back to the lodge to be refurbished. He's been a loyalty member ever since. So I wonder if he's grateful that he was refurbished and that is why he's so loyal. I wonder if it is tied to that, if he has that capability of emotion like that, or if it's just kind of in his programming be very interesting to see about that. Uh, then from the last picture that we see from Vasco, it says Vasco is one of Lunar Robotics earliest Model A robots, but with all of his upgrades, you'll never know it. He's fully outfitted and equipped to aid crew members in the field. So again, it's kind of one of those things that I wonder if there are other robots like him out there that we'll come across frequently. I mean, we see one in uh, one of the major cities, there's a security robot walking around but I wonder how many different models of these robots there are and what different capabilities they do have. But Vasco seems pretty sweet. But moving on to Andrea, they say, introducing Andrea, Constellation's newest recruit, hailing from the furthest reaches of the settled systems. Andrea is a bit of a mystery to everyone. No one knows where she's coming from or where she's going. We also find out that she is voiced by Sissy Jones. Again, another person I don't know, but I don't really know a whole lot of people, so maybe you do. <laughs> and then they say, beneath Andrea's seemingly cold demeanor, there is an air of mystery. Her proficiency in clandestine operations certainly raises some questions regarding her past endeavors. After that, they say, while her efficiency in the field is undeniable, Andrea can be fiercely independent to a fault. Vlad, or Vladimir, an outsider himself, has been her greatest ally in helping her embrace this new UC way of life. So I actually find her pretty interesting because she has a lot of mystery to her. And I wonder if we'll just kind of piece by piece get more information from her. Maybe she had a, a weird past life that we don't get to know a whole lot about until later in the story. I'm not completely sure with her. Uh, but that'll be kind of interesting to see. I also like that they mentioned Vlad or Vladimir in this as well. It kind of points to the idea that some of these 
uh, Constellation members are good friends with each other and maybe a little bit more distant to other members of Constellation. They may not all be just the best of friends, but they kind of pick their own uh, little groups of friends that they're really close with, but then they work all together at the end of the day. Kind of interesting to see, but I do appreciate that they add that in there. But moving on to Barrett, they say meet Barrett, one of the first members of Constellation you'll encounter on your adventures. His deep fascination with the universe has fueled his travels all over the galaxy and in pursuit of knowledge and new experiences. We also learn that Barrett is voiced by Barry Wiggins, and they say before joining Constellation, Barrett was a UC physicist, but life in a government lab didn't suit him. He uses his scientific knowledge as a tool to explore the universe and learn in the field. Barrett is an adventure through and through. The discovery of the artifacts raises new existential questions, and he is eager to get out there and find the answers. So I don't really know what my thoughts on Barrett really are. In the showcase, he seemed like he was a pretty funny character, but at the same time, I'd say he seems less uh, interesting than the other characters. He seems to have less uh, curiosity or mystery to him. So I'd be kind of interesting to see uh, what our interactions with Barrett are. I think he's going to be kind of the foundation of Constellation, a big part of the story. Uh, but I wonder if he's going to be very mysterious or have a lot of depth to him. That will be kind of cool to see. Now on to one of the more interesting backgrounds that we get, and that's Matteo Catri. They say, introducing Matteo, Constellation's resident theologian, committed to understanding humanity's place in the universe through studying relics of our ancient past. We also learn that Matteo is voiced by Carlos Valdez, and then they say, Matteo made a name for himself as a young explorer by hunting down religious relics that went missing after being taken from Earth. With each artifact constellation acquires, Matteo becomes more and more certain of his belief that they are proof of a divine higher power. So a couple things with this. He's a theologian, so he's trying to kind of piece together things on a theological side of things, trying to make sense of what these people are finding, the members of Constellation are finding with these artifacts. But I will point out, we learn that he's hunting down items after they went missing from being taken from Earth. This means that they found these items while we were still on Earth. I wonder if this had some part in the destruction of Earth. I'm not sure, but it would be really interesting to see that. And then on the second part, he mentions that these pieces make him think that there is a higher power out there, which if you've been watching my videos for a while now, you know that my opinion of the main story is that I think these pieces are going to join together to allow us to either communicate to or travel to a higher power or some type of alien life out there. Again, at the time that I'm recording this video, I actually don't know any of the main story. I haven't played the game yet, but it'll be really interesting to see how that connects to the main story. Next, we meet Noelle, the youngest member of Constellation. Beyond being Sarah Morgan's protege, she's a brilliant scientist in her own right and prefers to support Constellation from the comfort of her lab. We also learn that she is voiced by Dana Gorier. And then they say Noelle became enamored with Sarah Morgan's mission at Constellation after reading about her work in a scientific journal. After brief correspondence, Sarah invited her to join. Noelle has been working hard to study the artifacts her peers recover, analyzing their unique properties and theorizing their purpose. So she seems pretty straightforward. She's kind of the scientist on board. She's going to be the one analyzing the artifacts. I'm sure kind of finding some of the properties or purposes to those items. Pretty straightforward, but she's pretty cool as well. Now on to the best dad in Constellation, that is meet Sam Co, an excellent pilot and even better dad. Having a strong sense of frontier justice, Sam believes that if helping someone means breaking the rules, so be it. We also learn that he's voiced by another person with a complicated name, Elias Taufexis, I think. And then we learn that although Sam is a descendant of Solomon Co, founder of the Freestar Collective and legendary explorer, you'd never know it. He's a champion for the little guy and prefers life on the fringes of society. When Sam was just a teenager, he stole a small ship and took it on a joyride into space. One look into the vast expanse and he was hooked. From that day forward, he vowed to live a life among the stars. To me, Sam is definitely one of the more interesting of the Constellation members. I like that he's kind of a free spirit among the members of Constellation. He just seems kind of a meme to me. He just kind of does what he wants, but at the same time, he's always looking out for the little guy and just wants to help someone out. If he can help someone, he is willing to break the rules to do that, and I respect that. Moving on though, introducing Sarah Morgan, the fierce leader of Constellation. Passionate about Constellation's mission, leading through action, and earning the trust and respect of her peers, she's voiced by Emily O'Brien. 
They tell us Sarah is a veteran of the colony war. While she was only a navigator, her ship saw significant combat. The trauma she experiences in battle is something she carries with her to this day. After the war, Sarah devoted her life to exploration, searching the galaxy for new worlds and new wonders to uncover. At Constellation, she found purpose, direction, and a family to share them with. So obviously she's the leader of Constellation. I imagine we're going to see a lot of her and it seems kind of what she's going to be bringing to the table is, you know, a, a little bit of mental health or PTSD issues from that war. It'd be very interesting to kind of see her perspective on that, but it also seems like she's gathered these people to search out these artifacts because, well, she believes that there is a purpose in them, that she has a reason to be here and people to share trauma with or people to share kind of experience with, that she can feel a little bit better about her life, knowing that she is devoting her life to a sound purpose. Now on to a member that was referenced a little bit earlier, introducing Vlad, a former Crimson Fleet pirate with experience piloting ships in the far reaches of the settled systems. He's earned the respect and trust of his colleagues to become a pil pillar of constellation. It is interesting they mentioned trust in here because he was an ex-pilot, so you'd think there'd be a little bit of trust issues, but it sounds like that's not the case. Uh, he is voiced by Bumper Robinson. And they say for Vlad, Vlad joined Constellation after helping Sarah recover the Centaurus Proclamation. A photo of Vlad and Sarah holding the recovered document hangs in the lodge to this day. In his time with the Crimson Fleet, Vlad did things he's not proud of, but Constellation gave him a new lease on life. He found a new calling, true comrades, and the means to redeem his past. So he's going to be a really cool character. I mean, he's got some backstory to him. He's done things he's not proud of, but it seems like he's redeemed himself and he's kind of made a new purpose in his life. And that is to seek out these artifacts and figure out kind of the purpose of the universe. You know, ultimately what's out there. Now on to our last member, Mr. Moneybags, Walter Stroud, co-owner of Stroud Eklund, who has used both his wealth and passion for exploration to help build Constellation to what it is today. He's voiced by Armin Sherman. While some members were hesitant to let Walter join, fearing he was buying his way in, his passion and knowledge of founder Sebastian Banks proved sincere enough to gain their approval. Walter has become an important part of the team, bringing Matteo on board and funding projects like the Eye, Constellation's deep space scanner in orbit around Jemison. This guy's pretty straightforward. He's the one that brings in the money that funds all the projects. So he's pretty crucial. I'd be kind of curious to see how in depth he is. But that is all the current members of Constellation that we know of and some of the history or background to them. Each of the members are very, very different. They all come from different factions, different walks of life. So it'd be kind of cool to see how they merge together and how they interact with each other. It also seems like because they did come from different factions, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these members of Constellation are our introduction to a lot of factions, whether they're the ones that just initially tell us about them or they're the ones kind of walking us to the faction and introducing us to people we don't really know. Uh, but I'm really curious to see how this is all going to play out with the members of Constellation. Who are you going to be bringing along with you as your companion, if any, or if you're just going to go out solo? Let me know in the comment section down below. Again, thank you guys so much for the support. And you can expect some more Starfield videos from me uh, now that we are getting our hands on the game and you'll have my first impressions video out tomorrow. Until next time, stay worthy.